Hello and welcome back to Erner Berry's State of the Market, where we cover a market in hopefully five minutes or less. This week, we're joined again by Brian Moscajuri, Ag Reporter at Erner Berry, as well as Director of Marketing. Brian, the show. Hey, Laura. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's always a pleasure, and I am certain that there are a lot of people that are eager to hear from you this month, uh, not only to talk about the egg market today, but also to talk about what's to come in terms of Proposition 12. Yeah, I mean, it's been an eventful year plus, um, and it's looking like there's some more interesting storylines as we uh, we get through the end of 2021 here and beyond. Absolutely. So if you wouldn't mind, because I love Comtel, if you could pull it up and we can take a look at how things appear in our charts and our beautiful website while we discuss sure. it, that would be fantastic. Absolutely. Should be good to go. I'm just going to open up the uh, Shellig quotations page real quick, Laura. Um, there's not a whole hell of a lot that's exciting in terms of pricing outside of, um, you know, the market's been relatively low. It's really been pegged in terms of Midwest large right around the 93 cent per dozen mark um, since really the uh, the beginning of May. Um, and that is the industry continuing to deal with oversupply and, and some of the surplus that we've seen in the market. It's the industry dealing with the shift now, right? So some of that real firm retail demand um, that we've seen during the pandemic has kind of now shifted a little bit towards food service. Um, so retail is slowing down in some cases and it doesn't seem like the retailers are, are very inclined to feature at really aggressive price points. So, you know, a lot of the uh, contacts that we have on the production side are telling us that their retail orders just aren't living up to expectation. Um, and that's creating more inventory and it's leaving these markets under pressure. And it's, uh, it's a difficult time for the producers because they're also dealing with high input costs, right? You hear all about corn and soy prices being at very, very high levels. So high input costs, low shell egg markets, um, you know, it's, it's a difficult period for the producer right now. I can imagine. And I know we've done a lot of podcasts on eggs before. And one of the things that we always talk about is the seasonality of the egg market. We're also moving into the summer, right? And yep. I've heard you say a million times, uh, you know, that the summertime is not the most popular time for a hot breakfast. Would you say that that's just about the same this year in terms of seasonality? Or would you say that there's more demand than usual because people are still at home like you and me? What are your thoughts there? Yeah, so I mean, you, you think about as you as you go into the summer months. Um, we just got through Memorial Day weekend, right? Um, you know, it downpoured here for two, three days, and maybe people went out to breakfast and, and stuff like that. But really, everybody wants to fire up the grills and, and make beef and chicken and and ribs and all that kind of stuff. Um, and that does have an impact in terms of um, demand for eggs. And without the hustle and bustle, people running to work still, people, you know, taking kids to school, we're not seeing a, a huge push for, you know, the breakfast sandwiches and stuff like that at the QSR level. We haven't seen a ton of QSR promotion. I feel like we're back in that uh, that whole chicken sandwich war period that we saw a few years back. Um, but I think, you know, the industry right now in terms to generate demand and, and getting these markets back in balance needs like a breakfast award to, to start happening again at the, at the food service and QSR level. Um, and if you, you just kind of look at our inventory levels here, um, we did dip below that 2 million case mark um, at the end of May. And, I, and part of that is the lead up to Memorial Day, right? There's one less day of delivery. So retail orders were actually good going into Memorial Day weekend and they've kind of slowed since. But if you go back in the uh, the weeks leading up to Memorial Day, you'll see we're over 2 million cases of inventory for five consecutive weeks. And now we have that rebound back towards that 2 million uh, case mark again. So there's a lot of shell eggs in inventory right now uh, that the producers are dealing with. And one thing that I'll point out is this cage-free inventory. Um, again, hitting record highs pretty much every single week. Um, you can see this big jump that we've had here in the last week in cage-free inventories. And that again, is due to cage-free expansions, due to the producers preparing for the end of the year in Proposition 12 out in California. Um, California's market actually did have a little bit of a rally during May um, due to some features that were happening out there in the state. But now that gap, that spread between the Midwest large market and the California market is creating more offers for California again, especially as some of those features start to slow down. People are looking to take advantage of those spreads. And now that California market seems to be coming under some pressure given some of the more recent trading activity that we've seen. 
absolutely. And then in terms of cage free, since we're on the subject, I get a lot of questions about it, right? So one of the things sure. that I just wanted to cover with you, um, because you know we love to let our customers know what's coming down the pike. Uh, Proposition 12, top of mind, cage free, top of mind. We've got those slots on our tables for cage free. What do you think uh, we can expect in terms of seeing some cage free items on our data tables as companies are transitioning to those commitments? Right. So, um, you know, as with Proposition 2 um, and the early stages of Proposition 12, um, the California market will continue to adjust based on what the production style that is mandated in the state. So California's quote will be a cage-free quote as of the end of the year. Um, and along with that, because there's going to be more trading of, of California compliant, which will be cage-free, um, eggs that are going into the state from surrounding regions, you know, will have more transparency into those cage-free prices. So, you know, we would expect to have at least a, a national benchmark for, for cage-free prices. I would assume white and brown, um, at least on loose eggs early on. And then we'll look to expand that as that that trading um, of cage free product becomes more normalized as there's more transparency in the market. And as you know, cage free production becomes more of a, a piece of the overall picture right now. It's it's around 25 percent of total production, which is up significantly. It was only about you know three to five percent of total production just three, four years ago. So that continues to shift. We continue to see more cage free inventories, more cage free layers. Um, and, you know, we expect that to continue to be the case as we get into the end of the year because of uh, Proposition 12, because of the Massachusetts legislation that, that will also go into effect at the end of the year and because of the you know corporate and state by state timelines that we have between now and 2025. Perfect. Well, this is really great information. Obviously, I am looking forward to seeing those cage-free quotes. We've got a lot of customers that are looking forward to seeing it. I bet. Um, and I'm hoping that over the next couple of months, we can do a few more of these videos to get more of an update on what's going on, not only with the conventional egg market, but with the development of the cage-free on our side as well. Absolutely. Well, thanks for coming on. Obviously, you're a fan favorite. Eggs are pretty popular. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll have you on again within the next couple of weeks to give us another summer update on eggs. Anytime. Thanks, Laura. Thanks for watching this week's State of the Market with Brian Moscajuri. He's our egg reporter here at Ernerberry, as well as director of marketing. I'm Laura Zinger, host of the Market Digest podcast and head of territory sales. Have a great day.